I'd like to introduce uh, our keynote speaker this morning to all of you. Thierry Marin Martinaud is uh, Vice President, Engineering, and uh, CTO at TE Connectivity. He is an aerospace engineer with a vast experience in developing systems and applications working in the aviation industry. He has worked on thrust me mechanisms of Airbus A380. He has deep knowledge of, uh, on electrical braking systems and has drafted a prototype which uh, later was implemented on Boeing 787. Theory is an inventor and has established a company working on various seat actuators and almost all planes, I'm told, have uh, deployed them. Theory has around 39 patents to his name and on the lighter side, he likes to race and ride motorbikes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Theory Marine Martinod. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are not uh, too hungry and uh, you will be patient for the next 30 minutes. So what about um, uh, TE connectivity? Uh, the best uh, opportunity I have is to share with you um, a video. Are you sure? Impossible. For the few, this word is not an endpoint. It's a starting point for tomorrow's breakthrough. For them, no idea is too far-fetched. This endless quest forward by engineers has put the world at the dawn of a golden age of innovation. Today, we're dazzled by technology that didn't exist just a few years ago. Tomorrow is being born before our very eyes. And TE Connectivity is at the cusp of this transformation, straddling all that can be done and all that will be done. Our engineers working with other engineers, custom making the sensors and connectors that lead to new ways of living. Robots responding to human activity, roads talking to cars, the always on internet, technology revolutionizing healthcare, reshaping industry, redefining the future. Collaboration that's making our world safer, greener, smarter, and more beautiful. Turning today's impossible into tomorrow's awesome. TE Connectivity, every connection counts. So TE Connectivity is a worldwide company, but the message I have for you today is um, we are local. Uh, the approach from TE is to be uh, close to the customer. So we have here in Bangalore a manufacturing um, uh, workshop we are also developing a center of excellence um, of engineering. And um, we have uh, grown the team a lot last year and we are doubling uh, these uh, resources for next year. So outside of that, being the world leader in, in connectivity, T is also the world leader in innovation. We have been in the top 100 most innovative company for the last seven years. And uh, last year, we have been in the top 50 most innovative company. So I am personally the CTO of the Aerospace Defense and Marine uh, business unit from TE. And we are addressing different markets, commercial, space, uh, marine oil and gas, military. And we have also a wide uh, product range. So we are uh, developing connectors. Um, hermetic connector, high speed signal power. Uh, we are developing wire and harnesses um, and also all the components which are part of a power distribution system. I wanted to share with you today two global uh, technology trends uh, which are driving a lot of our engineering effort, uh, road mapping effort, and uh, we are, with my uh, 400 engineers, in charge of preparing the components which will support your future. So a big trend that we have across all the industries is the demand for more electrical power. So we can see that in the automotive industry. Uh, we see that in the commercial aerospace. Uh, we are currently uh, seeing uh, electrical uh, system network at one megawatt above one megawatt and in the coming years we are targeting the three five megawatts so 
these trends as, as a supplier, we have to read through these customer needs and understand what will be required in the future. So behind this more electrical power, we will have to develop solutions. And unfortunately, all for flying platforms, even on the ground, but more for the flying platform, uh, this increase of power will um, oblige us to use larger um, uh, gauge of wires. But we can't afford that. We will bring too much weight for the aircraft. So to manage that, the technical solution is to increase the voltage. So that's why people are sometimes confused. It's the high power which is driving the high voltage. Now, high voltage is not an easy solution. On the ground, it has been used for many years. This is what you have above your heads to carry a lot of current and electrical power. For an aircraft, we have an enemy. Uh, it's called the corona effect. So if you go in altitude, the air starts to be conductive and it creates a lot of problems. So we have to anticipate these problems and develop a generation of connectors and cables which will be corona-less or corona-resistant. Another big trend across the industry is the request for high speed. So one more, we have to translate what does that mean? Why do we want to have more and more speed? Across the industries, we see a request for exchanging more data. There are different reasons for that, but I have given three examples here. So in the military area, uh, these pictures is representing a new way of, it's a battlefield, but that's close to the reality. Now you have soldiers somewhere in the world, um, and you have other people somewhere in a bunker far from the battlefield, and they want to see, they want to hear, they want to smell what's going on in, in this battlefield. So all the, the uh, soldiers and um, the, the, the platforms you have on the battlefield, you want them to communicate, you want them to see, you want them to measure, uh, you want now to be more and more precise in the information. So you want to have details about the soldier in himself. You can measure the physio physiological parameters of the soldier. You want to know, like in a game, what is the energy remaining in this soldier if he's in a good shape. You want to hear his heart rate. You want to know the level of munitions remaining on these soldiers. And you want to have this vision for all your platform and the means you have in this battlefield but you want to have the evaluation of your enemy and have a good estimate of what they have also to fine tune your strategy and uh, being more precise in, uh, in your actions. So maybe another area which is uh, uh, less dramatic is the, the picture in the lower right corner. It represents the computer cloud. So why do we need more and more speed in these areas? It's because all of us. So I am looking at you and I am trying to see in each individual's maybe 40 to 100 parameters which define yourself, who you are, how do you drive, where do you drive every day, how you eat, what do you buy. All these data are collected by every supplier you are using in your private life. Uh, you are using a GPS system they are learning about what you are doing every day. They can recommend you early in the morning, hey, can you confirm you are going to work? Because they know you are going to work. They can propose the place for the restaurant on your way because they know you are used to stop in this restaurant. So all this information which are collected, they have to go somewhere, they have to be stored. What do you do in this computer? You are using AI to analyze all these parameters and define strategy or serve some um, uh, other suppliers who are looking at this data to know if I want to sell this product, who should I talk to? And I have identified few guys here. I know your address, I know your email, I know your phone number, so I can target you and be successful in my launch because I, I know that 95% of the case, 
you will buy my product because I know who you are and I know what you are looking for. So because of, of that, we need a lot of computation capabilities and we want to transfer this data in many areas. In the middle is another area which is growing is all this self-driving autonomous vehicle and not only on the ground, the flying cars are coming, so I have a few words about that, and you have a picture. I will tell you more about this uh, new bird. Uh, but as soon as you, remain, you, you remove the, the, the human body from a machine, from a vehicle, you have to replace him by a huge number of sensors. You are trying to replace the brain by a lot of sensors. And then mixing all this information, you are trying to react, act, at least at the level of the human body or better, if possible. So that's why when you are driving, the car has to measure the information about this environment. But because around him, he has a lot of targets which can become a threat in case of somebody is playing with a ball, a kid, or you have other vehicles with um, an, an incident and they are changing their trajectory, you have to know how to react. So you will have to exchange a lot of data be, be, between the vehicles and also between the vehicles and some companies who are very interested by the way you drive. For example, your insurance company. Very soon they will insure you depending on the way you drive, you will pay differently. Um, another example of data today, the famous Tesla company, they are electrical car. They are every second taking the information from the car, the way the drivers are using it to go in their software computation, changing their algorithm and download automatically um, uh, the, the, the microprocessor inside the car to improve um, and prepare the self-driving car. So this continuous exchange of information and data requires more high speed um, in the electronics. So for us, we have to develop the connector which will be capable of this high speed. So it's, it's a good introduction between me, what I have said on all of you, because there is a link with the space. And because of this huge exchange of data, one of the main purpose of the satellites is the communication. So it's not the only one, but that's one of them. We want to exchange very quickly all over the world at any time, any, any, ev anybody should have access to the website or to a, a machine or to a home or to a friend or a family. So I have listed some, some project. It's difficult to update it because it's moving a lot of this project. They are a little bit late. Uh, there are some difficulties, technical or financial, but it's coming. We have, the sky will be very, very busy. So it should be a very exciting uh, challenges for you because we will need launchers and we will need solution to bring these uh, birds in the sky. Some numbers, I, I won't read everything, but we are talking, depending on the solution and the function, you want to be low orbit or you want to be high orbit, depending of, of the cone, you will have a different coverage. There is somewhere a race to be first at the right altitude with the right uh, satellites. So that's why there is a lot of competition at the moment and I heard uh, some of the presenters before talking about the speed, it is important to be there at the right time. There is a, a real competition to um, uh, take a part of this uh, space. Uh, some other example uh, with numbers of satellites, it varies depending on the altitude. We are talking about low orbit, about thousands of satellites, uh, which, which will, will make uh, the sky very busy, but it's a lot of opportunities, big opportunities for us uh, to bring the right products uh, we will have because of these quantities. We know the challenge of the cost, 
uh, to help you to be um, economically, financially competitive too. Then I have put this picture because when I was young, I, I have two big pictures in my life if I, I make a connection with the space. Um, I was in France. It was in the middle of the night. It was in 1969. And my father, I remember, woke me uh, during the night and he said, kids, you may not understand, but you are seeing something which is exceptional. And that was the first man on the moon. And the second one, um, it was a SpaceX, the first time I, see, I saw the, the video on my computer and I see like a magic or like a Hollywood movie, uh, the launcher coming back on the Earth, landing, like, like it was very easy. Uh, that's the two image which I, I think it will stay um, always very deep in me. I have, because I am an engineer, I realize the work behind that. And you are that kind of guys. I have a lot of respect. I feel very humble today. Uh, a lot of brains are behind these big projects. Uh, another example, but it's, it's moving now faster and faster. I think, unfortunately, I think within a couple of years, everybody will do that. And uh, it, it will be normal. I don't think we will be any more uh, impressed by this uh, landing. But that has an impact on our, the design of our product. Think about the way we had to design a connector because of the mission, which was a one launch, a one mission. Now we have to change our strategy because we have connectors we, which will experience high temp, high vibration, but they will experience that many times. So there is behind that we have to read the story and change the way we develop the product to be sure we will uh, support your dreams. So what do we do uh, to help you? So my job and the job of the 400 engineers working with me is to be sure we are not waiting for the request from you because we will be almost late. The time to develop a new technology could be between 12 months, could be three years. So we have to listen to you and that's why I hope you will take the opportunity to work more and more with our engineers, sales and, and field application engineers here in Bangalore to talk. That way we can understand what will be your need and we will be able to develop the right product for you. So I will go quick through that. I won't read everything. We have a booth here just on the left when you, you go out. We have uh, the expert. I am personally here. I love technology. I am passionate by everything which is connected to technique and technology. You can question us. Um, so, but I want to highlight a few things. Uh, when you are working with T, you can work with us in many areas. The first one, if I make the link with the previous presenters, starting with the, 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 the brain, I mean the intelligence is in the microprocessor, so the software is loaded there, then we start working at the board level. T-connectivity and ADNM, we are the world leader in this high-speed connection on the PCB. We are the leader in the, we call it the VITA standard uh, for high-speed connector. Um, the, the name for us is the multi-gig RT3, the latest generation. We are able in a very small pitch with a minimum uh, space on your PCBs uh, to work at 25 gigabit per second, but in harsh environment. So we know uh, temperature, vibration, uh, shock. And um, just for your information, within T, we have solution which work in the lab up to 126 gigabit. And in the harsh environment, before I left the US, we just finalized the first modelization of what will be the RT4 which is the same, we, we try to keep the same uh, space on your PCB, same format, the RT4, we will offer you 56 gigabit per second, harsh environment. So that's the latest development. Something I don't know if you are using a lot in the space industry here, but we see a switch in the industry. Um, 
hybrid solution between copper and uh, fiber optic. So we have also in the same format developed solution. We have the uh, transceiver solution, so we manage the translation between copper, the electron and the photon, or the photon and the electron in a very, very small space. The latest development, we are able to integrate the transceiver in a size eight contact. Another area, I think the Deutsch brand name is pretty famous here, and uh, we have different solution in circular connector. Uh, we can, we are already um, space approved. Uh, we can uh, handle a lot of vibration and temperature variation. In material science, we have in, uh, uh, within T, um, 80 uh, engineers working on the advanced research, not reporting directly to me, it's a shared resources for T. They are made, 50% of them, they are PhDs, so they are playing with molecules, they are developing materials, and they can change the mechanical properties, they can change the electrical properties. So playing on the molecule, so we can develop the solution which fits for your needs. A good example is the hermetic connectors. You have some applications somewhere, you need a hermetic connector. So the technology which is well known today is to use glass hermetic, but we have developed also for some space activity, some epoxy. So our glass uh, hermetic connectors, they are currently at 10 minus um, nine, uh, helium test, and uh, the epoxy is guaranteed up to 10 minus six um, helium leakage. Innovation, so that's really the engine, it's in our DNA, it's in my DNA, it's in the T DNA, it's trying to bring something in the product. Um, we, we have collected the information working with customers that in space, uh, we think that commonly we said that there is nothing in space, it's empty, but in fact there are some particles and uh, you can have sometimes some electro, el electrostatic discharge. Uh, so we have developed, uh, it's, it's in, in concept because it's, it's under testing at the moment, uh, using uh, some carbon nanotubes uh, uh, to replace the shielding of the cables. So that could be a huge interest for you, it's the weight saving and it's the reliability and the availability of your function in space. After sales market in space is pretty costly, so it's better to think about it before. Um, aluminum cable, um, I have to mention that, that the aluminum cable are very well known since many, many years, but for the aerospace application, we had an obstacle. The obstacle was the crimping area, the contact, how to crimp an aluminum contact on a cable. Uh, it has to be reliable. So we have developed for the first time on the commercial aircraft was in 2008 for the Airbus A380. We have developed a contact and qualified a contact compatible with the uh, Airbus spec and the aluminum cable. And uh, now we have a full range of contact for signal and power. Uh, just for your information, for an Airbus A380, the big uh, bird, uh, thanks to the contact, we have been able to use cable uh, it brings a savings of 600 kilos per aircraft. So a huge saving in terms of weight. Then around the cable and harnesses, we have the capabilities to develop any uh, specific harnesses with any specific termination, and that can be locally made. We have the workshop here in Bangalore. Um, we are also thinking about cost impact in your production, so we are working always on fast installation. We have recently uh, launched, we call it the peak lamp. It's a simple bracket, but you can operate it with one hand, and it has a double safety for the locking mechanism, which is required for most of the uh, aerospace application. So you can have this bracket pre-positioned on your platform, you develop your harness and close the bracket first time just by the hand, and then you can come back and you have a locking mechanism, so you have a double safety. 
the other one is just the Im imagination on very simple product like a tie wrap in the commercial application at least. Harnesses are using tie wrap, but this, this small head that you have on the tie wrap uh, could be an enemy when you are trying to install it. It always uh, stays stuck somewhere against the structure or damage something. So we have developed the tie wrap, which is a flat head. And as you can see on the picture, it's very smooth. Um, within ADNM, we have also the widest uh, range of product for power distribution under the brand name of Kilovac and Hartman. Uh, we are ready for the high voltage. We have already a product range of 1,000 volt, 1,000 amp. Uh, we have developed also Pioneer in the solo solid state relay, uh, which is also, also very um, reliable system. So you don't need any more uh, electromechanical actuation. It's made electronically. Uh, we have developed a 270 volt uh, 600 amp, and we are working uh, 300 amp, and we are working on the 600 amp version. So high power solid state solution, and also T is maybe not known enough. We are the world leader in sensors, so we have the full range of sensors. Most of them are mainly uh, dedicated to automotive application, but we have uh, there. Um, some extension and reuse of these uh, sensors in many, many areas. So if you have a need for a sensors, you can contact us. We may have the product already on the shelf, or we may modify an existing product to make it, um, uh, to ruggedize it for your application. As I said, you heard a few messages about me. I am an innovator, 39 patents or ish, something like that. And I also, I am a fan of, um, I am racing motorcycle. Uh, so somewhere outside of T, I am the T champion. I volunteered, I am part of a team uh, which is called Arloop. So we have developed the, the mock-up of, um, we were part of the Hyperloop competition organized by Elon Musk. And then with this team, we are now on a Boeing contest called Go Fly. And uh, T is a sponsor of this team as I am a member also of the team. And um, we have uh, developed the orange vehicle, which is called the R-Flight. So it's a vertical takeoff. And I just wanted to share with you my passion for that. So I try to stay young. I try to stay aware. Uh, I am learning a lot because these teams, we are spread all over the world. So we are working with collaborative tool. We never met. We don't know each other just through the uh, Google uh, application, uh, um, and um, it's very interesting from a human point of view. So I am very interested to understand the mechanism of the passion, the motivation, and I am trying to think about how can I bring it that at home and get the same passion. Um, it's, it's very interesting. So I am sharing with you just a, a video. I think I have to launch it. We're here to change the way the world looks at the sky. It's a truly inspiring challenge to solve to fly a single man vehicle for 20 minutes without refueling or recharging. Because the tech is advancing and the cost is coming down, anybody with a smartphone or a laptop or a computer can connect with anybody around the world, find someone who's got the shared passion and interest, and there's nothing really restricting you from doing what you want to do. We've already overcome our own borders and boundaries to connect and work together. Coming from all different parts of the world, but we're all here for the same reason. So people will look up and see the same thing we do, an opportunity. TE connectivity has always pushed the boundary of engineering, innovation, and mobility. 
we are inspired by and are determined to support the possibilities of air flight, be it providing disaster relief in remote areas to being able to take to the skies with the same freedom and thrill of a motorcycle. There's no instruction manual, but at least we have all the parts. We are proud to connect with teams like AirFlight. We are making the world a more innovative place. Because at T-Connectivity, every connection counts. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big round of applause once again. Thierry Marin Martinod. I would like to request uh, Sanjeev Keska from Managing Director Aero Electronics to present a small token of our appreciation to Terry on behalf of IESA. We'd like to thank him once again for that keynote address, the very first one for this summit.